as we saw for the Ola Bonoli beam, which are beams that are quite thin, so their span to depth ratio is quite large. For example, the span to depth ratio is greater than 20. And here we assume that shear deformations are negligible, and only the bending moments cause deformations of the section. So the bending moment causes this section to rotate, and the section stays straight. So plane sections remain plane, and the section also remains perpendicular to the neutral axes before and after deformation. So with the Euler Bernoulli beam, we have a rotation theta, and the net rotation of the centroid is equal to theta. And this can be seen if you blow this up into a right triangle. Now with the Timoshenko beam, you have a rotation caused by the bending moment that causes the section to rotate, and here we can see that the section is perpendicular to the old neutral axes without shear deformation. So we have this angle looking something like this, being theta, and this bending deformation causes rotation of the section and the neutral axes. Now if we consider shear deformation, which needs to be considered for a Timoshenko beam, which is a lot thicker than the Euler Bernoulli beam, then you have this additional shear strain, which is a rotation due to the shear deformation. So this shear deformation causes a further rotation of the neutral axes, but it doesn't cause any further rotation of the cross section. So the net rotation of the neutral axes is the bending rotation and the shear rotation. So because the cross section doesn't rotate, as we can see, under a shear deformation, then if we look at some fibre in the beam that's at a wide distance from the neutral axes, so it could be somewhere here, so the displacement of this fibre is purely due to the bending deformation, and because the displacement's to the left, we have minus y by theta, where this angle theta is equal to this angle due to the bending deformation. And we're only looking at deformations in the plane, so we have a vertical deflection that's a function of x for both cases. And now we can calculate the bending strain, which is equal to the first derivative of u with respect to x. So that would be minus y d theta dx. And the tensor strain, epsilon xy, is one half by du dy plus dv dx. So for the Euler Bernoulli beam, epsilon xy is one half by du dy, which is minus theta plus dv dx, which is theta. And that's equal to zero. So there's no shear strains in the Euler Bernoulli beam. And for the Timoshenko beam, epsilon xy is one half by du dy, which is minus theta, plus dv dx. So that would be theta plus gamma. So for the Timoshenko beam, the tensor strain is one half of the shear strain. Please subscribe, like and comment to help me reach more students.